Momentum. Too passionate and busy mom sharing the quest to achieve entrepreneurial success. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. We have our first interview today. We are so excited. I am so excited about our first guest. We're going to introduce her in just a moment she here. She is in studio with us. Yes, and we right. are testing video. We'll see if we end up on camera, but today's episode is really exciting. We have a lot to share. Yes. Uh, so, Teresa Ofstad. Ariella Vaccarino, thank you for coming to Momentum. Momentum. And today we are learning as we go, as we have been on this journey this whole time. Mm -hmm. So even before we introduce her, to set it up, to even get her in here, <laughs> and to even consider putting a video to this, because we do yes. want to show some clips. Yes. It's been a bit of something. And the lighting is amazing. We've got so much equipment here, but it's how to set it up properly. What's good, what, How is the video going to look? What's the angle? So The we lighting. Have, we have the lighting. <laughs> we have two cameras. We have two microphones. We have a computer. We have a table. We have so yeah. much equipment in this room right now for our first interview. And uh, let's get to it. That's right. Awesome. So I do want to share a little bit of a background story story on our guest uh, mm -hmm. and how I know her as I've shared on a couple of our episodes you know there was a point in my life when my mom passed away that I really was in a dark place and I just knew I needed to do something to get out of it I didn't know what that something was I just knew I needed movement I needed mm -hmm. to do something I couldn't just sit on the couch every day because all I would do is think about her mm -hmm. so I uh with through work through connections and networking through work I found her course her mastermind course uh, and it was amazing. It was so amazing. I knew going through the mastermind course that it was going to help me get out of this funk that I was in. But I have to be honest, I was still in the funk. Mm. It took me taking the session a second time to wow. really pull me out. Mm -hmm. And in the second course, I had we had other people that went, why is she taking it again? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but I just, I found it so valuable. I knew it would help me. Um, but I did have to repeat it because the first time around, my, my you know, dark cloud was still above me and I wasn't mm -hmm. able to absorb the information in this class. And um, they were just really so powerful. And then seven mastermind classes later, all those were John Maxwell teachings. We'd read the book we'd go over chapters everyone's her favorite <laughs> every single and um so i just really admire this woman she is a huge mentor of mine and i'd like to introduce her i can't wait yes <laughs> so lilith chalakian say it is again say it again lilith chalakian lilith chalakian yes. so <laughs> nice to meet you lilith nice i've never met you. I've never met Lilith before, so this is really exciting for me. Yes. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You're welcome. Right. And so let's introduce her. I'm so excited to hear from her. Uh, Lilith Chalakian is a certified executive coach and corporate facilitator. She is the founder and CEO of New Gen Global Leaders on a mission of developing self-aware conscious, mindful, and evolved leaders across all generations who truly value and add value to people. Awesome. She is also a VP of Client Development at Character Inc. Along with her team, she facilitates integrity sales, integrity service, integrity communication, integrity coaching seminars with follow-up sessions that develop stronger relationships within and across all departments sustainable and consistent skills among all employees and strong culture based on values character and integrity um i'm gonna tell you her list is going on and mm -hmm. on and on there is so much that lilith does she has many certifications um she i'm was super excited to see she was on forbes coaches council hey. um she is an executive director with john maxwell leadership certification wow. team which is where i met her and she's many here years ago. she's here with us we have a little more famous the famous <laughs> lilith chalakian yeah, you got some contacts welcome lilith <laughs> thank welcome you welcome so much thank, thank you. you thanks thank for coming you. first of all thank you for having me on your podcast on your program on your journey first of all right yeah. it's a journey like it you is. said and i just love the name mm. momentum that's yes. all teresa yes. and and yeah. teresa it was knows. a collaboration <laughs> no, that, that we that was did you. come up that, with it oh, she one. gives the credit where yes, it's due absolutely. right yes. Yes. But team why, effort you know how much momentum we yes. talked about it yes. a lot mm -hmm. yes. in our masterminds how important the momentum is for me but the absolutely. way you kind of twisted it and momentum mm -hmm. for moms that's yeah. such an important mm -hmm. word so thank you for having me here and i'm just really excited yes. Yes. about getting to know you two, two better and 
um, having this discussion. Yes, I'm and so that leaves me, I almost forgot, she, um, best of all, and her most proud moment is being a mother of two daughters. Right, which is how you get on our show. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, anyone can listen, but moms are interviewed. Yes, absolutely. Moms and entrepreneurs. Yeah, yes, absolutely. yes. We definitely want to, you know, learn more about everyone's journey because this is a community. We love the support that we've already been receiving. We have a lot of different uh, audience out there, whether it is on our podcast or our Facebook or social media outlets. We so, have so many now. Yes, yes you can it. find us almost anywhere. I love it. <laughs> so, um, you know, I want to say, Lilith, I, I was going to share this a little bit later, but I do want to say there is one thing that I think was the most impactful throughout mm-hmm. our our journey together. And it was so simple. It was something that, you know, when it happened, everyone's like, what the heck are we doing? Uh, showing up to class every day, whether mm-hmm. it's at a mastermind or in school or whatever, you know, people tend to get in a, in a, in a route. You get into a groove. You become, yeah. you have habits. And everybody, we sat around this wonderful boardroom t- style table mm-hmm. and everybody went to the same seat. Every week, we went to the same right. seat. I don't know, maybe week two or three wasn't that far in. Lilith said to everybody, okay, everybody, I'm just going to um, ask that you sit in any other seat than the seat you sat in. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter where you sit, but it has to be a different seat. Uh, she, I think she only requested that once. But from her doing, we were like, what? Okay, let's get up. <laughs> yeah. Let's pick a different seat. Oh, Every week we came in after that, we were just on my, oh, we got to pick a different seat. I don't even think you said it a second time, but it just became like, we had to make that change and it was such it was such a simple little task but it became so it it started me on this uh you know leadership journey and becoming a true um you know leadership fanatic and and um you know life learner i want to learn i want i want new i want change i want to kind of break that mold Mm -hmm. and um it was so powerful powerful for me and that was like early on right that's just a simple thing but it really changes your thinking absolutely Absolutely. and i'm i'm so impressed that that made such a huge (laughs) impact on and i love it i'm smiling ear to ear because it's just the, that was the point of mm-hmm. it the whole thing when we go through the mastermind groups or any teaching or anything in our life we we are habitual animals mm-hmm. and i've said multiple times not to kind of insult us we're animals yeah. right humans are yeah. habitual animals and we tend to fall into that group mm-hmm. like you said and if we don't make a mindful and intentional choice to change something we end up doing same thing over and over again mm-hmm. and then not getting new results, right? Albert right. Einstein says that insanity mm-hmm. is doing same thing over and over yeah. again yet expecting different results. Yes. But what you mentioned, the key here was is that little shift, that mm-hmm. little change that made you think, do I want to sit in that seat? Go ahead and sit in that seat if you mm-hmm. want to sit there. But you're stopping, even if it's for a millisecond, mm-hmm. to think about, am I yeah. making an intentional choice or am I just letting the habits drive me? So it's more like, are habits driving me or am I driving my oh, habits? That's so good. Mm-hmm. Right? So, but I love that you said that because in multi different, you were in some groups, there were other groups that I had. Some people were like, oh, how do you want me to do this? It's so convenient. I love this seat. Mm-hmm. But then after a while, they mm-hmm. start recognize like, wow, it's like mm-hmm. I'm choosing whether I want to sit here or there and yeah. that's the power we as humans have is a choice yes I love that yes. you a know choice. this just happened to me I recently started taking some improv classes they're like groundlings and it's improv comedy it's this crazy thing I'm doing for myself at it. age 51 with mother of five but um I every of those 12 classes I sat in the same seat and next week I start the second level and just you saying that just was like wow I sat in the same seat every mm-hmm. time next week session i'm gonna yeah. change seats every time and yeah. see how that feels and everybody yeah. did in the class we all kind of found our spots yeah. that's that's what we do Ooh, i'm going to change it that's up. what we do yes. and then you start realizing that you see a different perspective from yeah. different places mm-hmm. from different view different people that are sitting mm-hmm. next to you remember we talked mm-hmm. about it, like change the people who are yeah. sitting next to you as yeah. well um there's nothing wrong if you choose like i said intentionally if you choose to go and sit in the same seat you know the reason yeah. why mm-hmm. why is there a reason you don't yeah. let the uh, habit drive you you yeah. drive the habit yeah. and it's powerful yeah. it really is powerful that. and that trains you to think in every others it kind of like transfers into mm-hmm. other lives mm-hmm. into mm-hmm. other parts of your life mm-hmm. you start realizing that you stop for millisecond to decide yeah to make a choice yeah, yeah. that's beca- that becomes natural you 
Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that so much. That's really, I'm I mean, so that's just, to you. Oh, that, I love it. I, I love know. that you share that. It's so, it's so exciting to hear the power of what I've been doing like years it's later, fantastic. how it's really impacted and changed and helped yeah. you. You know, and, and as I said, I'm very familiar with her mastermind classes and it was just so wonderful because if you're at home and you're reading a book and you're uh, learning from it, you're gaining knowledge, you're starting to see maybe how it might fit in your life. But having somebody like Lilith as your coach just help kind of guide you through and maybe even ask a question that will help trigger another thought that would really, it, it really, they really did apply to whatever we were doing in our life. Mm -hmm. And there were so many different people in, in each class it, of all, I mean, some that uh, own a business, some that didn't own a business, some that were stay home moms, some that were, uh, you know, working for a corporate office or whatever it is. It doesn't matter who you are reading these books and taking these kinds of courses and classes they truly help you figure out what's inside of you and help um you know help you personally mm -hmm. develop mm -hmm. and create your plan that's great yeah, absolutely and it, it applies it mm -hmm. applies to and i love whatever courses whether it's a masterminds lunch and learns or coaching group coaching mm -hmm. on individual how is it applying to you in mm -hmm. your life? And if you remember, a lot of it is discussion. Mm -hmm. And when somebody shares, this is how I applied it in this in my life, and this is how I see the results, then somebody else here is thinking, it's like, wow, mm -hmm. I could have applied yes. it. Because mm -hmm. we get stuck in one way of thinking, mm -hmm. and we only think that whatever we read or whatever Lily just talked about, it's only applicable in that way. It's mm -hmm. not. Yeah, because right. then when, when you're having that interaction, people talking and sharing with each mm -hmm. other how they have applied it, yes. then you're starting yeah. getting that light bulb is like yeah. oh I, I could apply it and I yes. did apply it but remember a lot yes. of times we have people like well we, we start every session with a reflection so how did you apply the material we discussed last week this this whole week how did you apply we come back and start with reflections remember mm -hmm. and some people will say by the time their turn work would come to them to yeah. share they would start sharing. It's like, well, when I came in, I didn't think that I had anything to share. But now that I'm hearing somebody else yes. sharing, I hear so-and-so shared this. Mm -hmm. I hear Teresa shared this. I realized I've applied it. Mm -hmm. oh, and this great. is how I applied mm -hmm. it in my life. And that's the power of having this community mm -hmm. and people together that are sharing. And what you're doing mm -hmm. here, bringing moms together on the podcast, listening to mm -hmm. you or coming to be interviewed mm -hmm. by you, you are sharing with them how everybody else applies it yeah. and it takes them outside of their own picture yes. to be able to see this is how else i can do this yes. and i'm not alone that's yes. exactly what we're trying to do we're trying to build some sort of community some sort of sisterhood with like-minded moms mm -hmm. and so many of us are stuck in our heads wanting to do these things but we have no one to talk to about it yeah. and once you have someone to talk to about it like she and i we were uh, the famous yes. track yes. that we would take walks on we could bounce ideas off of each other yeah. and then you know oh now you have two you have that much more power yeah, absolutely it yeah. started with two yeah now we're three yeah. yeah and it will just continue to develop right. and you know when we get to hundreds and thousands of oh other moms God, and yeah. we will get there i i feel that strongly about <laughs> this community that we're yeah. building and wanting to support really truly mm -hmm. Um, but I just I just remembered something, Lilith, I wanted to share. Yeah. Uh, you know, as she was saying, it changes the way you think. And with these reflections, there was a dad in the group, a yeah. gentleman in the group. Uh -huh. And a it was just so, so funny because <laughs> when he re shared his reflection, it, it brought him to his family life. And he said, mm -hmm. you know, it made me think differently. And I, I realized how much my wife does as a mom mm -hmm. and what, you know, how I could help support her he goes and I just decided right then and there I'm gonna do the dishes every night and he did and to this day years later wow. he does the dishes every single night and you know who you are if you're listening oh, we're not nice. gonna say that's names awesome. but we love you we love yes. that you shared that with us mm -hmm. and it does it makes you think in in other aspects of your life not just I went there to get myself out of a slump but okay. to help me with my uh, corporate office business that I was um, working in um, and it just applied to every aspect of my yeah. life. Yeah, and I want to say something about what you said earlier that you took it the second time, the mm -hmm. same mastermind group, you went through it mm -hmm. the second time. Um, there's a power of repeating it whether it's mm -hmm. that mastermind group or rereading a book or having a discussion about something that you thought you already got it mm -hmm. or you figured out or you thought it didn't apply to you, yeah. maybe, right? Mm -hmm. There's a power because um, the way we are, the grief, 
that you were going mm-hmm. through, dealing with things, difficulties in life. It doesn't always have to be grief. It, ha- it can be something at work, something mm-hmm. at home, right? Whatever we're dealing with, that's the filter that we're looking at mm-hmm. through exactly. in life, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And when we look through that filter, there are areas that we need to kind of scrap off clear mm-hmm. off before we can see something more. Mm. So when you go through it second, when you went through it first time, you got out of it what you needed in that moment. Yes. yes. You yes. got the energy to keep moving yeah. forward. You yeah. got something out mm-hmm. of it. It's not that you didn't get anything, right? Yeah. But when you came back to it, you I remember you sharing multiple times, you were looking at it through different, a different eyes. Yeah, right? sharper. Right? Mm-hmm. Now you were looking, it's like you peel that layer of the onion layer that yeah. was bringing the tears, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you kind of went deeper and now you're looking at it from a different perspective. Now you're looking at it with a different experience mm-hmm. and with different heart and different feelings that you come yeah. into it, right? Yeah. So there's a power. Sometimes we think, oh, I read this book, it didn't add value to me or I've taken this course, it mm-hmm. didn't add value. When you stop and you realize that actually did, Mm -hmm. it brought you to where you are today. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing that I learned from that process is there truly are different seasons in your life Mm -hmm. and, you know, and planting seeds Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. in that moment, I just knew I needed to make a a transition, a change, and I was moving into a different season in my life that I didn't know how to navigate. Yeah. Yeah. So these courses really helped me to do that. Um, But again, I was planting seeds because at that point in time, and I know you love to talk about planting seeds, so I'll let you um, expand on that if you'd like. You're a great student. I I I love love hearing you speak it because... It shows me there's power. Yes. You, you, it's like you take it away. Yes. The right? student becomes a teacher, yes. right? <laughs> I, love I love it. I love but, it. Um, but this planting seeds thing is I, I never in a million years would have thought that I would want to ever start a business. I just, you know, my mm. mom always worked at, she, uh, she worked, uh, where she worked, she worked there for, I think it was 40 years before she retired. Um, wow. So it was, you know, in our parents' generation, you work at a job for a really long yep. time before you retire mm-hmm. from there. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like our generation, and then even our kids' generation, they have is so many opportunities change. now. I think our, mm-hmm. our kids' generation is like, if you're not an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many opportunities yes. now, you yes. know. Absolutely. But if you wouldn't mind, I would really love yeah. to hear how this all started for you, mm-hmm. Lilith, because you know did you always know you were going to be an entrepreneur that you were going to be helping people or did it sort of just happen and where did the kids play in this like when you were you a mom when you started and once you became a mom did it have to shift I just I'd love a little bit of that backstory because I know you know her yes yes I don't know and I want all of our our listeners to know her yeah I want to hear your journey that's such an interesting question I've been asked over and over that question as I think through it I was like some part of me wants to say I fell into it, uh-huh. but part of me it's not. Mm-hmm. It's intentional. Mm-hmm. And the way I started as an inter- entrepreneur, first of all, my dad started a business when okay. we just moved to the country. So I was helping with the business. Then I was a big part of kind so of So you a, saw that firsthand. Firsthand. Yeah. Absolutely mm-hmm. firsthand. Mm-hmm. Even though I worked in, at Bank of America, I worked at different places, mm-hmm. but my I returned back to the family business. Uh-huh. So being an entrepreneur, I want to say was part of the way I saw life Mm -hmm. as well, but um, helping people. You asked, uh, where where did it start? It actually started with my daughters. Mm -hmm. Okay. When my daughters were born, and I think the way I want to say it, it's the desire inside of me that's always been there. That seed has always been there to constantly grow. It just, it just, I don't know where it came from. It's Mm -hmm. there. And I said, it's God given gift, right? Mm -hmm. It's that Mm -hmm. desire to constantly grow, to constantly be better. But then when I had my kids, um, it was uh, at a very early age, I realized. Were you working for your dad at that time? I've been blessed to have, be able to run the family business because it gave me flexibility. So you were running a business. I was part of it. We're running the business. So you were almost like you were entrepreneur by family. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and and also while I was in the business, kids in the kinder in the elementary school, I was there for every volunteering opportunity, every awesome. field trip. Mm-hmm. I was like that's the, the whole school mm-hmm. knew yeah. me, right? Yes. I was that involved with my kids because that's the way I know is the mm-hmm. best way. Mm-hmm. Elementary school, middle school, mm-hmm. I pulled back yes. and I told my they kids They don't care about you yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I told my Especially kids when I am, to high school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am here when you need me, you're fighting your battles. Middle yeah. school, you're teaching them to fight their battles Mm -hmm. and high school they're already in the battles yeah (laughs) right right Right? so that was my approach and 
I am blessed to say that I have this opportunity, family business that was mm-hmm. so flexible for me to be able to mm-hmm. adapt my working hours. If I needed to be in school in the afternoon, then I finished my work later on yeah. in the evening. So I had that flexibility and I had a family support. Mm-hmm. My parents, my, my husband's parents, my in-laws, they were there. And my sister, our kids were so close in age. So, so you had family to help out. Support, That's always. such a big deal because yeah. so many mothers are struggling Don't. because they have to pay for daycare. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, that's a huge factor. Yeah. So and you even, had something set up. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and it kind of naturally, I guess, came came about. Yeah. I, it wasn't like anything specifically planned, even though me and my sister always joked, we'll have kids at the same time. Yeah. We'll get, but we ended up very close in age. So our five kids together, they grew up very close. So that was kind of... My kids were a big mm-hmm. part of where I am today. Yes. Mm-hmm. My whole life, I knew that I loved to teach. I loved mm-hmm. to mentor. I did tutoring. Even with my broken English, I was tutoring yeah. in algebra, and I was tutoring math. I'm like, I just loved helping mm-hmm. people. I just had that. That was a gift that was given. But um, as far as the coaching and mentoring, it more came into 2015, specifically mm-hmm. in okay. coaching and mentoring. But before that, it was very technical. My mm-hmm. background was very tra- technical training and yeah. teaching. So with my kids, how I started this journey, I realized when I had the kids, I want to help make this world better for them. Mm, Because when I think about when they grow up Mm -hmm. and they're living, who they're surrounded by, Mm -hmm. that that started me thinking, like, I need to be able to contribute and make this world better that's for them. Yeah. And that's idea. why my kids are a biggest inspiration for me because yeah. I can't I can raise them with the values and integrity and things that I want them to grow mm-hmm. up with. Yeah. But I can't raise them in a bubble. Mm-hmm. No. They still have to go and interact out there in the world. So yeah. I realize I can't just do my part mm-hmm. with the, within the family but in the community mm-hmm. as well. And that was my biggest inspiration yeah. too. And a drive and desire to be better myself Mm -hmm. and continue adding value Mm -hmm. around me to anybody I interact with. So in 2015, what happened? You just Uh, opened a website? Well, actually not 2015. It It kind of happened in 2012 or 13. Okay. I met a person, um, I was part of Toastmasters, Mm -hmm. and I was told about the John Maxwell team. Mm -hmm. Um, And he was a great friend and a great mentor for me. And he told me, like, you have a heart for that Mm. team. So that's like, he's a self-help guru kind of? John John Maxwell, he's a leadership guru. Leadership guru. He is, like, he's written books after books Mm -hmm. after books for leadership Mm -hmm. and how to be. And a lot of people tell me, you you Mm -hmm. know, you heard Mm -hmm. me say this, like, First of all, I walk into the room, I ask people to raise their hands if they're a leader. And half of the room doesn't raise their hands. I'm like, well, are you a mother? Yes. Are you a Mm -hmm. friend? Yes. Are you a volunteering somewhere? Yes. Then raise your hand because we all are Mm -hmm. leaders. And we don't need a position to be a leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Think of it. Mm -hmm. Moms, dads, we are leading, Mm -hmm. we're teaching, we're influencing our children. John Maxwell always says, leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. We don't need a position, right? And I take that to the next level, talk about sales, but that's different. So when I was introduced to his program, I was kind of first hesitant. I was going through a difficult time. And then I was thinking about doing doctoral degree. So I'm like, I'm I'm kind of going to research. For two years, I did research about Mm -hmm. John Maxwell's group. And part of it, I, I, I don't think I've shared this openly yet. But knowing that John Maxwell used to be a pastor, I was mm. kind of hesitant. I'm like, oh, I don't want any clans. I don't want to join any like uh, groups. That is like oh, clan. Like a clan. Okay, yeah. So I was like kind of uh, tippy toeing reading his. Th- I started reading his books, and the friend of mine he gave me the very first book by John Maxwell that I read, Fifteen Laws of Growth. Mm -hmm. Um, that really actually got me on this journey started. And then finally I, I took the dive. I said, I'm going to join the team. Uh, Mm -hmm. it's a team that certifies you to be a coach, a trainer, a speaker. Um, and that's where I got my first certification to be a coach and a trainer. Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, I was certified through Mm -hmm. integrity coaching. So multiple other certifications Mm -hmm. Uh after that, because I always believe like you got to keep adding to yourself. Mm -hmm. So you have more to give. Mm -hmm. Um, Can I I ask you, what was your education up until this point? And what was Master's. your degree in? But I what had was a master's in business, in business, in business. administration, okay. which really helped me running the business. Fantastic. Right? Okay. So my bachelor's was more technical, MIS. By the, mm-hmm. uh, the, this time, they don't call it management information systems mm-hmm. anymore. It's information technology. Okay. So it was management information systems and accounting, which mm-hmm. was really helpful. I double majored at kind of running the business, doing the books, and all of that was very mm-hmm. helpful. 
And then I went to the MBA, um, which was, I, I always had wanted to do my master's. Awesome. So. And what was your father's business? I'm just trying it's to get a, your background. Yeah, it's a medical x-ray equipment field. Okay. So we, we do sell and service equipment, medical x-ray equipment. So that technical background kind of helped me take mm -hmm. care of being in charge of the digital portion of it. Anything digital related, digital x-rays, digital, it's, yeah, whatever. I'm not going to go yeah. into the terminology of it. But having the digital background and knowing technical background and knowing how the software operates how to fix mm -hmm. it, where the bugs are, where the problems mm -hmm. are. That kind of helped me a lot mm -hmm. um, in running this business and was yeah. kind of in alignment with what this business I was doing in this business and helping people, helping yeah. training people on right. how, but it was very technical. So it's it so fascinating technical. to see the layers in your life that get you to a certain yeah. point. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, that's why I love to hear, I mean, that's Stories, the goal of yeah. all these interviews is to yeah. find out where does this come from? Where's yes. the nugget of yes. the, the hope, the desire and, and the training and yeah. what yeah. makes you who you are? Yeah. Yeah, and everyone yeah. is so different. Um, and, you know, their experiences are different. Absolutely. And then how they apply those experiences mm -hmm. in their life are different. Um, like you said, there's we all have layers, right. you know. And um, I, I love what you were saying about your kids and, and how, you know, as a mom, I think at some point we all want a better world for our kids. Yes. Um, but some of us moms, you know, just want and we think about those things. And you actually are doing something about it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really um, commendable. And, you know... I, I do, I do, I do what I do in order to train my son and, and be that, that mentor for him. You know, I think to myself, what, what is it I want to teach him? Well, I need to do it first. He needs mm -hmm. to see me doing it before he will even have an idea that, oh, maybe I should do this, or maybe yeah. I should focus, maybe I should work on something, you know, that I want to change in my life kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. And my kids, you know, especially as they get older, um, I think they're looking at me now and they're seeing that I'm, you know, starting to do this comedy again and I have a podcast and I'm bringing voice lessons to go back to life. I see them tell their friends about it. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, have you seen my mom on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Or have you? And I, they're proud of it. They have mm, they something are. to be proud of yes. and yes. something to aspire to. Yes. And well, my mom did this. Yes. So I'm going to do that. You do know? you know, one of the kids on the basketball team, I don't remember which one specifically, but she came up to me and said, do you know Ariel is famous? <laughs> <laughs> I hear I hear her music on the car in, in oh, when we're driving to school. It. It's so cute. It was so cute. You're yeah. famous. I'm, I'm not quite famous, but I, I'll take it. To well, this kid, you are woo, famous. I like it. Exactly. And that's the thing to somebody, we yeah. are something. And so um But maybe you know, that kid will then yeah. aspire. You yes. know, because they she feels like she knows someone famous, which I'm yes, not. But yes. maybe, you know, yeah, we all pull each other up, <laughs> yes. you know, from from the mom to the friend to the kid to the yes. husband. Yes. You know, we pull each other up. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's what this talking. community yeah. is all about. I just love, 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 love the support that everybody in this community has and gives each other. Yeah, yeah. you're talking to the power of role model. Mm -hmm. You're ah. being a role model for your kids. Uh -huh. You're being a role model because. They watch you and they see even you keep saying your age. You look so young. Don't even say your age. Uh, no, like I am going to say my age because I think it. May, I, I said it does that make a first, difference to the point. Yeah, my first day when I did take that improv class and everybody was in their twenties, I said I I'm not a tired looking forty year old. I'm a fantastic looking fifty one year old. Yep. So yep. I wanted them to know, and it's all natural. So yeah, it is beautiful. Yeah. And what you're role modeling to them that regardless the age, you follow your dreams. That's mm -hmm. that's it right there. Regardless that's your it. age, you're mm -hmm. going to do it. Yes, you might stumble. Yes, you might fall. Yes, you might not yeah. do it as perfect as you would have wanted, probably. But <laughs> you're the role model. And I love how you said it, mm -hmm. Teresa. I have to do what I want my kids to do. Mm -hmm. We need the most... The, I love how John Maxwell says, that it's so disgusting when kids follow what you do, not what you say. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I hate it, but I, I love it so yeah. much. It's yeah. so true. There's yeah. so much power in that because we can keep saying, you got to do this, you got to do this, but we're not doing it ourselves. Mm -hmm. How do we expect our children to follow? How do we expect the younger generation to follow and, and do something that we are not willing to do? Yeah. We're mm -hmm. not willing to take the time to do it, right? So mm -hmm. it takes that level of humility and understanding and wisdom that I need to be a better person if I want my child to be better, right? Yeah. Also, when you talk about, and I want moms to understand, um, because we talked about famous, mm -hmm. what does famous mean? Right. Yeah. Let's define famous. Do we need to have 
30,000 and 30 million people following us to be famous. No. Like you said, yeah. uh, Teresa just shared, you are famous yes. to I'm this famous group of basketball. Yes. 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 <laughs> to this group of boys and basketball team because they know you yeah. for what, but they have that closer interaction with you through your sons, mm -hmm. probably yeah, through right. your children. Right. Now you're a role model to them. Mm -hmm. You're famous. So make, having an impact mm -hmm. doesn't, we don't have to be on this big stage yeah. to have that I impact. That. and influence to be a make a difference in life like yeah. you said the way i want to make a difference in my son's life but think about how you're impacting his friends yes yeah. and, it, and it multiplies right Absolutely. you're you're impacting one person in that moment mm. but where does it go from there how many other people yeah. are you impacting yeah. in yeah. this world be through that interaction yep. um and i do want to add ariella yes. that you're more famous than you know because you know there was uh, i remember in some of the um facebook groups that we've been going in and chatting in one of these women just popped up and went oh my gosh ariella i've been listening to your cds okay. i feel like i know you okay Teresa, you know, we so, already you already mentioned that i know before. i did but you no know, that, that no, part i don't think i, don't I mentioned think so. but okay. but um you know i'm um, just the point is you impact more people than you, you realize and your cds you've sold thousands oh, not yeah. just one yeah. not yeah, just yeah. two but thousands thank you so there are people in this world who have been impacted by you right yeah yeah, yeah. well i appreciate that but you know the other thing that we're talking about as well and not to belittle that i think it's awesome um is my desire now is stretching that time because it when you're young you, you're supposed to go out go after it and in early 20s you're supposed to go after it and then once you get married and have the kids lots of times it's it's like, oh, it's done. You, mm -hmm. You've gone after it. Now you're a mom. Mm -hmm. And I'm wanting to, you know, fight that and stretch my time where I'm allowed to go after it. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't care yeah. about my mm -hmm. age. You know, I'm yeah. still a person. Mm -hmm. You know, I still have my talents and my dreams. And I can still make an impact. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's a big deal for me. I mm -hmm. absolutely agree. And, you know, there are moments in time when you can take a pause. If you're a new mom... Be a new mom. Oh, figure honey, that, I did that. Figure that yeah. business out because that is a true full time business yeah. is just yeah. being yeah. a mom. And then when you have a moment to breathe mm -hmm. and you have time to, you know, research or, you know, dream of the next thing, then go for it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I think you just said it. You just took it away from me. I wanted to say, you know, we think about it being mom as just being a mom. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. No. But, but yeah. you said it. It's yeah. it's a full-time job. But that's our purpose as well in yeah. that season. Mm -hmm. And being yeah, the, the best season. mom that we could be mm -hmm. is being present there with them. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you're letting go of your dreams. Doesn't yeah. mean you're letting go of your desires i remember my my daughter my youngest my oldest daughter actually literally at the time when she was probably three four um i was studying for a plus certification that's a very technical exam and i wanted to have that uh, computer in the computer world the book literally was this thick mm -hmm. it was a red book a huge book yeah so what i did while i was putting her asleep i would sit in the room She's in her bed, and I'm reading. I'm studying mm -hmm. for that exam. Are you reading out my... loud? No. <laughs> to myself. No. <laughs> she grows up. She knows no. it all already. <laughs> I literally know. Uh, but I had my little clip, the light on, yeah. and I would do it. But I would, there present, mm -hmm. I would finish with mm -hmm. my story with her. We would uh, yeah. kiss and tuck her in bed, and I would just sit in the room. Mm -hmm. One day I came home from work. My mother-in-law said, you know what Emma did today? She literally grabbed that thickest book. I mean, like, she's probably no more than three years old. Mm -hmm. She grabbed that book. She said she put it in the middle of the living room. She opened the book. She started pages. flipping the pages. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Flipping the pages. And literally, she's, like, bubbling as if she's reading. Yeah. Aww. And, and they're watching you. Yes. They're listening. So. Right. I didn't give up my dream. I found a way yes. to combine mm -hmm. things together. Right. I'm not yeah. saying that's the way you should do it. Yeah, but yeah. what I'm saying is we don't need to give up on our dreams. No, yeah. not We at all. find, as moms, we find the best way we can be as yeah. a parent, right. as a mom, dads as well, right? Yeah. I know this is for moms, yeah. but yeah. No, for it's sure. all for all of us, for moms especially. Find it. We do the best that we can do as a mom mm -hmm. while not ever letting. I, I just recently told one of my coaching clients, I said, actively waiting. Mm -hmm. And she really loved that term. Mm -hmm. Actively waiting, meaning you know this is the season you're in now. You're doing the best that you can. Yeah. Not perfect. Right. The best. I can be the first one to say. Yeah. My daughter's <laughs> till today, I remember one time I threw the headset 
in the direction. And they're teasing me with that. It's like, mom, you throw it out our direction. I'm like, oh my God, don't even <laughs> remind me I did that. You know, we 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 have our human moments. Yes. Right? Yes. And I erased it out of my mind. They jokingly keep reminding me that. And I love that. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that because that reminds keep me. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, real. oh my yeah, God. I was like, but we do the best we can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're just human. Yeah. We have our days. We have our emotions. Not to say it's right, mm-hmm. but to be able to get up from it and say, you know what? Today is a new day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A new grace, new mm-hmm. day. I can do it better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And but- new moms, new moms, <laughs> new moms. You know, I know myself. I was an opera singer. I couldn't do it. I couldn't continue to sing opera and have babies. You know, there was too much pressure Mm -hmm. to be healthy, to be Mm well-rested, and to not scream, to not use my voice Mm -hmm. in ways that weren't, you know, Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it. You Mm -hmm. shouldn't do it as an opera singer. I I couldn't do it. So I had to shift into teaching, you know, and into writing and creating different things. And that's okay. Sometimes you do have to let go of a dream Mm -hmm. or or pivot or come back to it later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's okay because what was more important were my babies. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, but you were still singing and you were teaching singing. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Right? Yes. Absolutely. You were still, yes. you didn't go too far away. You pivoted. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. You yes. adapted, to, adapted the, to your surroundings. Yeah. And that's the thing because I'll share, you know, when, when I was a new mom, I had every intention of going back to work. I did not plan on staying home, although I always dreamed of being able to stay home mm-hmm. with my children, child, you know, yeah. um, is uh, I did end up quitting my job and taking that time for three to four years till he was ready to go to school to come back to Mm -hmm. uh, a full-time job again. And in the beginning, I really struggled with that because I was so implanted that I needed to be part of our income for the family. I needed to support our family. I needed to bring in revenue. My husband had a job. He was bringing in good revenue. And, you know, you get accustomed to a certain lifestyle. With two incomes, there's a certain lifestyle you lead. When you have one income, you figure it out. You adjust. And it was that initially that fear of, oh, my gosh, how are we going to make it on only one income? You figure it out. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, as I was in that moment and I was struggling with that, it finally just hit me. Wait a minute. I am doing the most important thing yes. I am meant to do right now, and that is raise my child. And mm-hmm. I... I so value those few years that I had with him. Well, that's to be a able really to be short there. amount of time. Yes. It feels so long yes. when you're in it. Does. Yes. But, mm-hmm. You know, from the baby to them starting kindergarten. Yes. yes. It's a short amount of time. It is. Absolutely. It yeah. is. And it's time that I, you, you won't get back, mm-hmm. you know. And, and that's not to say you can't work and no, figure right. it out. There are many moms that work yeah. all the way through it. But I was just so grateful that I had that time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because I'll be honest, my son, and th- this is something, you know, that I don't think I've shared yet, is that um, he did struggle. He had some medical problems in the beginning as an infant. And I did feel that for me as a mom, I didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. How was I supposed to uh, expect someone Someone else, else. a caregiver, Mm -hmm. to know Mm -hmm. what to Mm -hmm. expect? And so for me, it was the most important place for me to be. And he's fantastic now. He's doing fabulously now. now. He's grown out of a lot of those issues he had as a baby. Um, But um, but yeah, so it was was, um, a time in my life that I I'm so grateful for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, it's it's just talks to the power of there's no wrong or right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We yeah. all have our journey, whether we're working working full time, whether we're stay at home mom, there's no right or wrong. Mm-hmm. We can't compare and I think in our society very often we try to compare oh so and so how so and so is able to do this, mm-hmm. work full time and take care of children yeah. so well and we start getting this anxiety mm-hmm. attacks like mm-hmm. why am I not be-? and then the guilt and then this worry and stress. Mm-hmm. Don't compare yeah. yourself mm-hmm. to anybody else. Mm-hmm. This is your journey. Sit and kind of that self awareness, yeah. right? Talk yeah. about this awareness and realization and prioritizing what's so, what's important for me. Like you said, for me mm-hmm. I knew being there with my son Mm -hmm. you had your reasons behind it because of additional health Mm -hmm. issues that you didn't know what to expect but still even without that you knew you wanted to be those first few years with him right and with you as well and for me as well I wanted to be as close as I can as as involved as I could be in their Mm -hmm. life Mm -hmm. so when you think about what is my priority Mm -hmm. and remember because while and I so clearly remember while we're going through it sometimes you feel like this is it this is my whole life Mm -hmm. 
yeah, yeah. and it's not. It's yeah, every it's minute. not right. Yes. It's only yeah. been five minutes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and it's not remembering that it's a season. It's a let's season. The, right let's now. make the best out of yeah. this season, and yeah. then we will see actively waiting and doing whatever mm. we need to be doing. I consist. I continuously Zig Ziglar's books, like mm. uh, what is it, Stephen Covey books, all the books that I was mm-hmm. curious about psychology and how to help people. I still was reading it, yeah. even though I wasn't actively doing. Coaching. So you were. You you're still planting seeds, yeah. planting mm-hmm. seeds, right? Mm-hmm. You're still developing at the pace that you can with all the other activities mm-hmm. and uh, taking kids to places. I so clearly remember, like years back, you realized that your children paying attention to everything. Yeah. My kids at the time they had ice skating, swimming, mm-hmm. dancing, music, mm-hmm. uh, music theater, piano lessons, music. I mean, you name it. Yeah. We had so many activities, and a lot of it was in North Hollywood area, and just like. Last year, sometime, we were driving with my youngest daughter through that area. We were dro- driving by where the ice skating. She kind of looked at me. She's like, Mom, how were you doing all of this and working at the yeah. same time? Mm-hmm. How did you have time mm-hmm. yeah. to take... I was like t- driving yeah. them all over the place. Mm-hmm. We had yeah. in the trunk of my car, we had their clothes changing mm-hmm. for yes. gas and this and that, right? I wasn't thinking. Mm-hmm. I was just doing You're it. You're just in it. Mm-hmm. You're just in it, yeah. right? But the fact that she kind of reflected yeah. mm-hmm. and she said, how did you even have time to do all of this and work? Makes you realize they're, they're paying attention, yeah. right? So be just be, be who you are. Yeah. Be the yeah. best you can. Prioritize. And as a mom, later on, you will reflect and you realize, first of all, the season will be over. Mm-hmm. That's there true. will be time. You, you <laughs> learn that, say, especially after one kid. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. really you get an awareness yeah. by kid exactly. two, three, four, and five. Right? Yeah. They're like, mom, I love you. <laughs> Goodbye. Have yeah. fun. And, and and they go, right? They don't want to like yeah. and it's true. They love yeah. you. They yeah. they they, yeah. they enjoy your time. But that time goes sm- smaller and smaller while their time with the friends and with everybody else yeah. grows bigger, right? And that's natural part. You want to let them fly, right? Yeah. Of course. So I think in the moment, like you said earlier, when yeah. we're going through it, it seems like it's so like this is the end. It's yeah. so long. Mm-hmm. Yet it goes by and it mm-hmm. and it does um, go away. Yeah. So I want to share. There's Sorry. another. I know. I know. It's so. Uh, it it only lasts for so. We long. gotta stop the podcast. I gotta find my kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go hold them. Yeah. And tell them we love them. Yeah. <laughs> stop growing. Yes. Um. But there was um something else I wanted to share. You know, Lilith also does a lot of these uh, one-off um training sessions, Zoom calls, um different. You know, different. Um. You know, she she loves teaching in all different mm-hmm. ways, and so I've taken several of those. Uh, opportunities as well and you know we had the opportunity to do a little bit of one-on-one coaching and and one of the things I wanted to bring up is you know as I shared my ideas of building my business you know one of the really good tips she gave me was you know as you start to move forward you know take your train and start bringing people on the train oh, with like you mm-hmm. and it does apply to the situation yeah. where we're building momentum as mm-hmm. you're moving your train down the down the track and you're starting to bring others along the journey with you yeah. and that's kind of what we've done here mm-hmm. Ariella, yeah. is create this platform where we're bringing other moms mm-hmm. along the ride um, and we're going to have this massive train at the end yeah. of the track. I'm so excited to meet it. all of them, too. But so even fascinating. in business, it's just so important, you know, um, find the people you can collaborate mm-hmm. with. Find the people that you can bring on your team. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I've, I've learned is, you know, whatever, um, you know, nobody's perfect. Everybody has pros and cons, mm-hmm. you know, positive, negative. Uh, we all have our faults. Find those people to help fill that gap Mm -hmm. that you don't have to find the mirror image of you. You can find somebody that um, also, and I'm sorry, I'm taking some of your thunder, but you're probably going to say a lot of this part of it. But, but, you know, again, this is a lot of the things that I've learned along the way. And, um, you know, so so you can can find those people to help you along the way and help move you forward. Yeah, they don't have to be just like you. Like the two of us are very different. Like two of us, oh my gosh. It just makes me think of us so much, you know. There's so much of this technical stuff stuff I would have no idea what to do yeah but you have so much patience in other things that I have no patience for (laughs) so it's you know it's that it's like a marriage yeah yeah Yeah. that's the beauty of collaboration yes you did you did say it so perfectly amazing you know you staff to your weaknesses Mm -hmm. we when we are looking in terms of business it's it's good to have people that are like you but you don't Mm want to have your entire team mirroring who you are Mm mm-hmm 
Because like you said, we have strength and we have weaknesses. Yeah. We can be great and technical and not so good in interactions mm -hmm. and relationship, building those relationships with people. Some of us are very analytical. Some of us are very creative, right? So when you think, and communication, we told you, you've mm -hmm. done the discommunications that we do, human behavior and communication styles. The way we communicate is even different, right? Mm -hmm. So many different styles that are out there. So when we bring people that are all like us, then we're not um, we're not able to successfully complete the task. If you yeah. need the research done, you need somebody who is very conscientious, who's cautious and does the research, does fa find the facts. And they don't have to be to... super charismatic. Exactly. You know, like they can have their thing and the other person has their thing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Everybody yeah. brings their gifts. So staff to your weaknesses is the mm -hmm. word, the Love phrase that, that I used mm -hmm. a lot through our mastermind groups, mm -hmm. right? It's very important to bring those people. Like you said, none of us are perfect and mm -hmm. we, we, don't, we don't expect, we shouldn't expect i mean some people out there they expect to be perfect and they think they are but if they think they are then they're not aware of it um <laughs> but uh, we shouldn't expect anybody to be perfect and just mm -hmm. value them for who they are mm -hmm. and their strength yeah right and like you said we complement each other we need to find people who complement us and create mm -hmm. that synergy yes. that yes. you as a team as a whole team mm -hmm. can create a better output than you by yourself or you by yourself yeah. can. And but that's hard sometimes when, when you're a mom and you're just with your kids all the time or if you need to connect with somebody but you can't pay them. You know, yeah. that, there's, yeah. there's a money issue. Absolutely. Like, I know exactly who I want to hire to take care of things yeah. but it's you do have to pay for it, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. So how do you get people who are willing to work with you and if they're going to compliment you and so you really got to be lucky. Right. Mm -hmm. And you and you've got but you have to know what you're looking for. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. I don't know if I believe in luck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. And I said that I knew yeah. she would say something. <laughs> I had a feeling like, oh, here we go with the lucky. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> no, no, but there I love that you brought it up. Yeah, There's yeah. a little bit of luck, but yeah. Uh, yeah. You Ch know circumstances that, that you might come together that you yeah. might not normally come together. Yeah. So yeah. It's it, to me. I'm a believer. I'm a huge believer in God and the way God mm -hmm. brings people into our life and mm -hmm. the way He takes away people from from our mm -hmm. life. The way He opens the doors, the way He closes the doors in our lives, right? But our part in it is intentionality, having clarity. Mm -hmm. What do yeah. I? What am I like? You mm -hmm. had clear vision mm -hmm. about your dream. You didn't have a clear deal yeah. how. Yeah. Exactly. Right. But you knew this is your vision. This is yeah. your purpose. You knew that you knew, knew that you knew this is it. This yeah. was something that given to you mm -hmm. as a big vision for yeah. your um, mm -hmm. for, for your foundation, for mm -hmm. life foundation, right? Mm -hmm. um, some of us don't have that clear big picture or yeah. it doesn't need to be a foundation that helps entire community or multiple communities, something. Yeah. But mm -hmm. having a clarity of what we want and the types of people that we want he brings them into our life. Yeah. yeah. We say in our world, we say we attract them. But yeah. I believe that he Law of brings Law attraction, it, whether it's yeah. religious, whether yeah. it's universe, yeah. whatever. The it, intention. Those people yeah. come into your life. Yeah. At the time when it's the time. Yeah. Right? yeah. But you also have to be open to see it. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and that's where I think luck is it's more of a preparation plus like intentionality and having the clarity mm -hmm. we have to do our part yeah. yeah we can't just sit and wait for that luck to happen Absolutely. but i know what you meant you didn't yeah. mean that way yeah. but i just wanted to like yeah like this is i'm no, so that's passionate exactly about. way better said than what i meant yeah. 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 <laughs> way better said yeah. um you know but I, it, it also leads me back to what i was saying at the beginning of this uh interview was you know, there are so many people, like you said, you have to be open minded to it. So many people have these blinders mm -hmm. on and they mm -hmm. do get stuck in a yeah. pattern, in a mm -hmm. routine, in mm -hmm. a this is the way yeah. life is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this, something as simple as that changing of the seat. It yeah. helped me to yes. open my eyes. Right. You look around the room and right. go, OK, where do I want to sit? Who right. do I want to sit next to? Yeah. Um, even that, you know, I interaction helped others to open up and right. be able to speak to uh, you know, be able to participate in the group yeah. more, you know? and that's why I took that improv class. Yeah, it made me super uncomfortable. Yeah, but I knew I needed to change things up. I needed yeah. to mix it up. So even now, I'm going to go into this like second session, and um, I'm doing it because I saw the good that happened from it. Mm -hmm. I started that before we started this podcast. Yeah. It yeah. all started happening at once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I started talking about wanting to reinvigorate this part of my life. And so and then I took that class and I was telling her about mm -hmm. it. And all these things just started happening. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I was at some 
kind of terrible job and that went away. It all just, and that, mm-hmm. you know, I hadn't expected that to go away. And all of a sudden it brought me back to singing, which brought me to the podcast, which yeah. brought me, and everything is now feeding into it. So yeah. I signed up yeah. for that second level and I'm going to yeah. put myself through it. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. I think that's the idea. You're getting yeah. yourself outside of the comfort zone. Yes. Mm-hmm. You've got to step out of that yeah. comfort mm-hmm. zone. But notice how the doors were closed. They were locked. The the job that went away. <laughs> yeah, right? there yeah. were no doors. Yeah, yeah. And now yeah. I'm starting to see the doors again. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's kind of crazy how all this happened at the same time because yeah. my uh, my job situation was intentional. Yours was unintentional, mm-hmm. but it happened at the same time as we were walking around the track, and mm-hmm. you know everything else just blossomed from mm-hmm. there. What I wanted to go back to is when you said you had to stop being an opera singer, right? Yeah. But you did recordings. You yeah. did CDs. You did your teaching. You mm-hmm. continued with your passion, maybe not to the degree that you would have had a freedom to do. Yeah. You still continued planting seeds. We're going back mm-hmm. to planting yes. seeds, right? Yes. You notice how it did not take you away. Sometimes when we're on the path in our life, sometimes life brings, think of it as a sailboat. Okay. The wind blows us this direction and become, brings it. Eventually, you come back to whatever your yeah. purpose is. We're constantly blown away in a different directions, yet we return to that path, whatever our purpose in life mm-hmm. is. So even if, if you weren't the opera singer, yet you were planting the seeds. And now listen to different people talk about you. Oh, she's yeah. famous. Yeah. She, had, she <laughs> yes. sold the CDs. You notice how everything played into yeah. Where you are today, it's some doors layers. closed. It's yeah. those layers mm-hmm. and build up to where we you are today and what you're doing today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And had you not, and that's, that's going back kind of a little to the point of the luck that we yeah. talked about the yeah. luck, right? I you shouldn't have stop. said it. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> glad you would have had this great conversation. Yeah. If no, you no, did. I am it so was glad, glad you said it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and what I want for your listeners to take away that. Whatever it is, even if it's not 100% how you would envision, you yeah. still keep doing, following your passion, yeah. mm-hmm. singing your passion, right? Yeah. That's what I'm understanding. Your sure. voice, your beautiful voice. You sang you. a couple of times before we started. I'm like, can you please continue singing? I appreciate it. <laughs> but you followed your passion maybe because of the circumstances in life, which is aka having kids. You couldn't do all the way, yet you continued somewhat in your passion. Mm-hmm. Yet mm-hmm. you will look at it now, it's paying off. Yeah. So what you're doing with your path podcast, you have followers now, they know you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And right. you realize you're more famous than you even thought <laughs> you are, right? Yeah. And the same thing with you. Yeah. You were yeah. building relationships mm-hmm. through different jobs. Mm-hmm. Some of them you didn't like it. But notice how it in some ways interacting with residents yeah. helped yeah. you know what the needs are, right? Yes. So everything is planting yes. seeds yeah. into where you're gonna eventually be when all the doors that yes. don't need to be open close and the one that needs to be open opens up and you walk through that door absolutely mm-hmm. and those transferable skills that you learn mm-hmm. from different completely different mm-hmm. types of, of jobs or businesses or you know experiences you have in life they transfer over to whatever it is you're currently absolutely. working on or, or moving towards um, I saw that so many times in in my different industries mm-hmm. that I've worked in I had so many sales and networking and connecting and just that relationship building it's it's a muscle I I was yeah. developing it, and yeah. now I can do it here. Um, so that's, you know, and the, the Toastmasters as well. Absolutely. Just we, we say in Toastmasters, there's so many areas of your life that Toastmasters can help, not just the fear of speaking, right. which is the number one right. reason mm-hmm. people think mm-hmm. of Toastmasters yeah. and get involved in it. But there's so many leadership skills that you build, listening skills that mm-hmm. you build. We were just, our last meeting uh, that we were on, we were talking about all the various ways that our muscles are working. Absolutely. Yeah. And so it's just any kind of personal development, anything that, that can help move you forward, we highly suggest taking it. And wait, what about motherhood? Yes. Motherhood yes. is the ultimate training for yes. almost anything possible Absolutely. you yes. can think of. The managing level that you mm-hmm. accomplish, you know, mm-hmm. getting your kid out the door in the morning. <laughs> I mean, think of what that requires. Yeah. You're getting this little creature up who doesn't want to wake up. You somehow have to convince them. Yep. That's sales yep. right there. Sales right? and leadership. Yeah, yeah. Sales, sales and leadership. And leadership. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right yeah. there. I mean, there's just so much you do as a parent and just managing the day mm-hmm. and getting people fed and getting people to the doctor. It's so much. Mm-hmm. Taking people's care. There's, mm-hmm. there's human resources. You got to yes. take care of their feelings. You yes. Know? For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have to understand where they come from. Yeah. You yeah. understand how they communicate, yeah. how to yeah. motivate, and 
for you for with five kids mm-hmm. i'm like i thought yes. it was hard with two kids yeah. <laughs> yeah. i can imagine like all of them have their different personalities and communication mm-hmm. styles and whatever motivates mm-hmm. them yeah. is different well right? at a certain mm-hmm. point you just keep them alive yeah after yeah. like yeah. two or three kids it's yeah, just you keep them yeah. alive yeah, yeah. yeah. make but. sure you get them out the door in the morning make sure they return in the enough. evening <laughs> yeah there we go that's about it <laughs> so oh my gosh this has been so awesome lilith i love just the conversation starters that this created yeah. and you know hopefully our listeners got something yeah. out of this i know they must have you know at least one golden nugget out of this conversation we're going to post all mm-hmm. of your socials all your contacts your book everything mm-hmm. you have yes we're going to be posting it please go look her yes. up go find her yes. write a little note thank her for coming on to our yeah. podcast yes <laughs> yes thank all the links yeah. absolutely it's been a pleasure and all the, her links our links our yes. affiliates whatever links you can we'll find in our, yeah. Yeah, whatever links you can find <laughs> yeah. in our episode here and our social media it was really um, inspiring yeah you know really also there's something about you that is just so calm and introspective and i think we all need that sometimes Mm -hmm. we just have to slow down and be present in the moment and really look at our own personal journey you Mm -hmm. know and i promise you i'm going to be sitting in new chairs all the time (laughs) i love it i love it it's the one thing to take away today just sit in a new chair (laughs) i wasn't always like that i have to say yeah it takes a lot of time Mm -hmm. with introspection and to Mm -hmm. get there so Mm -hmm. just give yourself grace yeah there's a value in us being older now and we have mm-hmm. that time yeah so i just i want to send yeah. all you mommies out there go out and go after your dreams Absolutely. follow your dreams ladies thanks for listening momentum to passionate and busy moms sharing the quest to achieve entrepreneurial success 